Welcome everyone. Um, this is Game On Live. We've done a few of these before where we've done them and they weren't live and then we shared them to YouTube. So we had requests to do them while people were live so they could ask questions as we did the class. So my name is Dara Collins. And I'm Donna Miller-Small. And the two of us wrote Modern American Canasta, The Complete Guide. It is available on our website. Um, for everyone who is looking to learn or improve their strategy, we meet you whatever part of your journey for Canasta you're at. So if you are just learning, we have all the rules. We have shortcuts to rules. We have tons of appendices, amazing visuals. If you already know how to play, we have 14 chapters to improve your game. And this is just an example of if somebody, if you play Mahjong and you know when people first start playing, um, can you use a joker in a pair? The similar things we get all the time is, can I pick the pack? You know, when can I pick the pack to open? So we have really good detailed visuals to explain complicated questions. And we want to be your Canasta hotline. We want to build a, Maj a Canasta community like we've done for Mahjong. And we are available by email, by social media. So I'm going to stop this share so I could see everybody oh, and I could see myself. Okay, so I'm just going to look. Um, so we have people in plantation. We have people. This is great. Roslyn. So if you missed um, anything about Donna's next library talk, we are posting that on Facebook. It's already there, but I'll share it again. And um, before we get started, Donna, what do you want to? Um, just hi, New Jersey. Hi, Los Angeles. Um, <laughs> We are recording this and it will be uploaded to YouTube should you want to review it um, for those of you who have just joined us. Okay, um, I think we should. Okay, get, so let me playing here. share the screen. So if you've never played on Real Canasta before, can, by the way, can you see my screen, Donna? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So if you've never Excellent. played on Real Canasta before, it is a very similar setup to live games and on YouTube the two of us went through and did maybe a five minute little quick tutorial on how to set up games and how to play and just the different bells and whistles that the, ga the game has so we are going to start a new game I'm going to put it do you think slow or medium I think medium and I want to say hi to Esther one of my students I see you on the screen <laughs> So nice to see a familiar face. Thanks okay, so before we even get started, even for some players that have been playing for a while, the term mill base gets very confusing. So in order to mill to open, you only need to use two cards and one or two wild cards and, and an additional pure. So for opening, you only need two cards and one wild to make one of your, at least one of your mills. Once that happens, before you sit down with people to play or before you play online, you have to know your meld base. So that's why this says after initial melds. That's a great way to say it. So we pick five. That's Don and I did a poll um, on Facebook and five was the most popular way. And just in case someone tries to join and doesn't want to be shared, I'm going to do invisible mode. So before we even get started, um, Donna, when I do this, I'm trying to see if I could pull up the chat again. Oh, okay, I can. I can see the chat. Right, and I'm okay. watching. I'm watching the chat. Yeah, I, I Detroit. So before we get started, does anyone have any confusion over mill base? Okay, we're good. Okay, so also I just want to interject. The one thing that differs from. Um, and the other thing, when you're joining a group, you want to find out what mill base the special hands. And we are familiar with the special hands on Real Canasta. In our book, we have um, made the zip code hand um, less points, but we're playing on Real Canasta. We're gonna play with, with their rules. Okay. Right. Oh, DC, so, I was born in DC, hello. Okay. <laughs> I have a feeling that might, might be my special. <laughs> I think that's my husband. <laughs> okay, that's funny. All right. So, so Donna uh, knows me, and maybe I get this from Mahjong, and maybe the atomic hands for in Mahjong, the house hand, you know, the house rule hand, maybe it's from Canasta. But when I play Mahjong, the first thing I think of is singles and pairs. And then if that doesn't work out, I switch to other hands. Similarly in Canasta, 
right on the deal, the first thing I do is see how far away I am from a special. And it's just, that's just the way my brain is wired. So this actually, the fact that we have a pair of twos, a pair of aces and one seven, we're very set, not set in the terms of only- well, We have three other so pairs. Very close so we, to the pair special and wild. Right, and we haven't picked our 14th card yet. Right. So, okay, so that didn't help us. But so now, normally, if we were at 180, I usually start with getting rid of the lowest number cards. Since we're at 125 and we have two aces, if we don't get a special, we'll pretty much be, you know, we'll get points. So I would get rid of either the nine, the queen, or the king. Absolutely agreed. So this is one of those not real strategy, but inside Dara's brain strategy. I feel like people kind of like how there's psychology when you go into like a, a theme park, a lot of people go to the right. So I like to go to the left. There's left. I feel like people feel that queens and kings and jacks face cards are more valuable. So I actually like to throw those and keep the lower number 10 point cards. I don't know if that makes any sense, but for me, it seems to. So I would throw the king. So if while we're doing this, I mean, I know right now it's just the beginning. In the chat, Don is monitoring it. I'm looking at it. If there's something that you have a question about or what you would do, type. And that's why we're doing this live. And our that's partner just threw a seven, by the way. So, and this is great that we can go slow and it's just bots. So on Real Canasta, they do signal. Um, if you don't know what signaling is, it's a strategy. However, it's not a science. So in the book, we explain, I think we, because when you were doing a talk, I sent you the, I cut and pasted the um, reasons. I think there's about four or five false signals. When I pick the pack, if I only have, if I have to go really deep to use a lot of cards and I only have three cards left, I might throw a seven, even though I don't have two more in hand. Because I need to have mean, cards left mean, to pick the pack. Tara, you mean when you open? When I pick the pack. To, I'm sorry, when I open. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. When I, I'm sorry. Yes. When we, I we agree. I don't know if we talked about that, but when I teach, um, yes, that's a pass we give to our partner. And it's a partnership game. And you can discuss things with your partner beforehand. And I play with Dara, not enough, because we're busy with our book. But I know... <laughs> that she throws high cards out. So that's also knowing my partner's style. All right. So also, if you see somebody throwing a bunch of aces and a bunch of sevens, you pretty much know they're going for a special hand. So there's certain things that you could kind of figure out. You are not allowed to um, talk at all. The only signaling you're allowed to do is through aces and sevens, you know, what you're throwing. And you are... And this was very confusing to try to explain on Facebook. You are allowed to tell your partner if you can't reach their cards, you could say, please put this wild card on the fours or please put this wild card on the kings. You can't tell somebody in, you know, you can't have them tell you where to put it, but you can say where you want your wild cards going. Um, Ronnie, I don't signal with jokers. I personally, that's not something I do. Donna, have, do you do that? Signal with jokers? Some people throw a high card, yeah, a high card yes. and follow up with a low card. Like there's a way yes. to signal with jokers. Yeah, you know what? We talked about that and it's not done enough that we even, we decided yeah. not to write about it in the book. I'm putting this, um, there's a question in the chat. Um, are, in real games, um, are, well, in person, can you put an information, a cheat sheet to help you learn faster? Absolutely. And we have a fabulous Canasta Companion card in our book, a big one and a cutout. And I think Marcia has purpose. the book. It's the one that you can cut out at the end. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So let's go on. Okay. So that's interesting. Now we're going from that one special to another, but so yeah. would you be nervous yet and throw an ace or would you be comfortable keeping three aces since they opened and they haven't? Uh, yeah. And they have... Uh, Yes, I would. Uh, I'm fine with three aces. With that, so, we don't have a we don't have a fewer to open. So what? So are you just in know? case, yeah, just in case people are joining us that haven't played for that long, you don't want to keep more than two sevens or two aces in hand. So the reason I asked that, and the reason I one of the reasons I love the game is, if let's say computer three had two closed canastas and their partner only had one card, 
there's no way I'd keep that ace. So exactly. every decision, if somebody asks you, what would you do? There are so many factors. So in this case, I think it's fine. Um, they don't have nines out. They don't have queens out. So it really doesn't matter which one There's I throw. four cards there. Yeah. Now, I don't know why the bot's putting down a four. They seem to do that. It's not what we recommend. We yeah. recommend keeping cards in your hand so you can pick the discard pile. Yeah. One card means nothing. No. Okay. So I could look back. Oh. <laughs> Um, five. so I will throw a queen. Hmm. We're playing our hands at this point. There are 30 cards in that discard pile. We're not worried. Yeah. A partner threw a six. They open with six. Chances are they don't have it. Let's see. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you could, uh, you can look back whenever it's your turn and looking back is in order to know clues about what to discard. So that's the purpose of looking back. Um, I have a feeling they're going to pick the deck if I throw a king, but it's a, the, our only single card, so. Yeah, we got to go for a pure. Oh, well, no. Hmm. Do a queen. Yeah, um, so Fran asked how often you could look back. The one thing you could only do once during each round is you could only ask once of your partner if you can go out. But you wow. can look back three cards every turn you have. Yeah. And when, you, and when you ask to go out, you must ask before you put down any cards. And that's the one thing that real canasta hasn't changed. So sometimes when we talk about it, people are like, no, 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 that's not the rule. I'm like, no, that really is the rule. But ah. so we can finally open, but one, two, three, four, five. So we could finally like open, or I don't think, since we're talking so much, I haven't really been counting. Would you throw a seven and hope for a special? Oh, boy. Four, three, wow. Um, mm. or, or pick the pack and get 20 cards. I mean, this is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's David. Yeah, in this case, I would. Um, even if our partner throws a seven, we're going to hopefully pick the discard pile. And it's a good, safe card for us to throw. Yeah, and normally we recommend keeping two sevens in hand, but our partner had thrown a seven. So hopefully they... Mm. Oh, we Dude. didn't have tens. I'm shocked. All right. Uh, so now we need, so we need, so this is a perfect example of why we value this um, zip code at 1500 points in our book and not 2,500. Because right now we could get a two, a six, or an eight for a special. So the fact that you can get any three cards and it's so common, uh, so close. See, you know where the card's going. When I see it going in that direction, I think it's going to be an eight. All right. So, yeah, so we, and then in the back of the book, we have notes, blank pages, and you can write down what, you know, your Monday group thinks zip codes are 2,500. Great. You know, your Tuesday group goes with the. Ah, there's the eight, Dara. Is it taunting us? I think we should open and pick the pack. All right. We so have it. Oh, yeah, no, we definitely have it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and just so you know, before, if you, oh, well, it's, I'm going to show next time. The, the app will count for you and tell you how many points you have. So this is interesting. I know we need this pure. Yeah. So I don't like, I got to move the chat. I don't like putting five down. Right. So would you, oh no, but we need 30 points. Okay. Forget it. I try not to put five down on a meld. Yeah. But um, we, we have to. Oh, how pretty. So now this is a little different how I would play and how Donna would play. So now let's see if you would change it for this one. I would play that since they're having trouble getting any canastas, I would just put down everything I could right now. Oh, I would. Okay. With, with 20 cards in a pack. Absolutely. Okay. But so why don't you explain how you normally would think though? Um, normally, if it's early, um, I would not put down, I would still keep pairs in my hand to pick the discard pile. But remember, it depends where you are and where your opponents are. We got a huge pack. How much more are we going to need? We we're we're going to close out at least two canastas here. And there's not a lot of bad stuff here. No, that we're, this is a great pack. Yeah. So get out of Dodge, you know, before they can. Hopefully our partner has some help for us. 
And now this is interesting. If I throw, well, it wouldn't matter because there's nothing on the deck. If there's, there's only two sevens in my hand. If I throw the jack and, th- yeah. and put all the kings out, then I might be stuck throwing a seven, but I guess it wouldn't matter because I'd have two in hand. So that's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. Susan's asking about 2,500. A zip code's 2,500 on here. You want to put down those kings and take a chance with not having much else to throw. I think um, oh, it's too late now, I think. <laughs> too late now, but I was going to, well, we were busy chatting, but okay. Yeah, it, it, on real canasta, they go by 2,500. In our book, it's and it's one thing we discussed with Ronnie, that in our book, we believe that 2,500 is a little high because if you think about it, it's a partnership game. You're supposed to be working with your partner. So if one person gets a few um, zip codes, the game's over in, you know, three, you know, maybe three or four rounds. So we just appreciate it being a little bit of a lower Oh, look at this, getting more points. That's good. Okay. And it's so funny. Sometimes I sit and wait. And so what? They got five cards. You know, I sit there thinking, oh, shoot, what should I throw? But I feel like they might be holding sevens because the whole pack, there were only two. It just seems odd. They must, yeah. Unless there's a lot of sevens left in the in the stock. Okay. All right. Well, the, so now if you look yeah. here, they have five jacks. So when my mom first taught us and, and said something about, you don't have to worry when they have five, you know, it's an easy discard. And it opened the speed of my game for me so much because I wasn't even thinking about that before. Because if you have five cards, it's considered the fifth position. And the maximum number of cards you can have in a canasta is seven. So if you have five, and someone throws one, you must pick with two and you must put all the cards you pick with on the canasta. Well, that can't be, you can't have eight. So throwing that jack to five jacks is completely safe for this round. Of course they could pick it you know, with another card later, but that discard's definitely safe. Oh, and there was a post about the zip code hand and I was gonna say it, 90% of the specials made are zip codes. That's why we think it's too, it's overvalued. Oh, so Susan, in your games, you don't use a deuce or a wild for the zip code. That's very interesting. Because on real canasta, you can. You can use a pair of twos. You can use can anything, use yeah. Pair. Oh, yeah. look at that. Oh, so, the eighth. Right, so before we do that, I mean, I can't imagine that they're that, that would be really interesting. Do you, can you think that they're that um, advanced that they're holding two sevens to pick the pack? Well, how many sevens were in it? Our partner threw one. We, we got our partners. So I'm just wondering, this almost feels like we should throw the ace as a safe card. Not to be paranoid, but... Well, there's seven cards in there. Can you look back three? Is it our turn? Oh, we got They have one. two, one, two. And then their partner has two. That's four. That's six. I mean, I guess what, whatever you think. I mean, we can close the ace and then have one left. Huh. I mean, um, it would be different, obviously, if it was a pure aces, of course, but the ace is going to be 300 points versus the risk, which usually I'm somewhat yeah. of a risky player, yeah, but the risk are. of throwing the seven and having them pick the whole pack and close sevens. And to go out um, for an extra hundred points. Um, yeah. I think, we, I think we let our partner try to go out. Yeah. All right. Fine. Throw the ace. It'll be interesting. We'll see at the end what cards they have, but yeah. He couldn't go out and now if we do it their partner's not going to have a turn so oh, oh so we could close so the aces anyway now we have to because we've got to have well, but even even if i throw the seven now their partner's not going to get a turn so now oh, good, good, good. Know, yeah 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 now yeah. we can bait them into Perfect. picking the sevens go ahead yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah right oh so they did have two and they did have two. Oh, look at wow see Oh, and our partner had to. Everybody, wow. everybody was playing exactly how you and my mom taught. Keep yeah. two sevens when you can. <laughs> right. And you know what? What I was thinking when we threw the ace, 
I said, it's good. And maybe we'll pick a wild card that we could use. Have yep. we closed that ASAP? I don't know if we had, well, we had other things in uh, five yep. emails. All right. So we did, we did great. So okay. do you want to just go over the scoring just to give a recap? Uh, sure. And that's one thing we like. Um, and I forgot about this when somebody asked me about um, why we like Real Canasta. They show you the scoring, um, whereas other venues don't. So um, um, we had one red three, we had three black threes. So we've got 600 there. Um, we hope they're gonna change their language. We had um, pure canastas too. Um, sorry, mixed canastas too. And we had three pure canastas. So we racked up some good points there in our card count. Um, and they salvaged the round. You know, they ended up with two mixed canastas. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Marcia was asking, I think we had five aces and a wild, and then we put a wild on, and then they have one ace in hand. We discarded one. So that's five, six. So, and then I think one more ace. So would that be eight? I think, right. yeah. Right. And Marcia did ask why we discarded that ace and didn't close out the canasta. We did it because we were worried about sevens. Yeah. And then just so you know, if you go into, um, which we go over this on our YouTube video, looking back is in person too. You're always allowed to look back three. Yeah. So if you go into the little wheel on the bottom right, there's a bunch of different options. I have it set up under more options. I have auto meld three. So for auto meld three, that means if there's any threes in my hand, it will automatically put them down. The great thing about that is you don't forget and you don't get stuck with them. The negative of that is if the, you then transition to real play, um, you might forget to put your threes down. Okay, and Dara, somebody asked, if they just started using real canasta and they're confused when the round ends, how can you tell who won? Um, so well, when we get to the end, we'll show it again. We'll show they it usually again. show round score and then current score. So you kind of have to look under current score below. It says round score. Well, and how, uh, who won at the end? You know, it ends when somebody melds out or when the stock is used, which is what happened on this game. So that automatically ended. Hopefully we've helped you. We'll review it again when we, oh, they opened right away. Yeah, they oh, did. Oh, well. Yeah, no, I had the, the zip, the settings up. Okay, okay, so let's just take a count of ours. So we do have our pure already. We have one, two. So usually what I look at is if I have one ace and they already opened and they didn't have an ace, I kind of, even if I'm close to or have the points, I would love to wait a little bit to pick an ace just to know that then that's not a danger, mm. you know, um, mm. but we can't do anything yet. So if you see what I did, I clicked on the cards that shows 30 points for the jacks, 20 points for the two. If I put the twos with the fours, that's only 60 points, that's not enough. It just is interesting that it counts for you. Just be sure, because I've done this before. Let's say you have three wild cards, make sure that you're also putting up two sets of pairs or three different melds, because you can't use three wild cards on one meld. So make sure if you're counting your points, you're putting them on different melds. And that goes for real games too. So uh, we spoke to Ronnie about, yeah, they, don't, going to, okay, yeah, they don't put a 10 point penalty for mismelding because when they're counting, your cards are face down. So the computer players, or if you're playing live, nobody sees your the front of your card. So that's actually a great thing to do in person too except try not to take too much time doing it because sometimes people you play might, you know, might get annoyed, but don't put the cards face up because then you will have a 10 point penalty. And if you put aces out or if you put wild cards out, your partner can then not do a pure ace or a pure seven or a wild card melt because they have too much intel about your hand. So it's really important to not show what you're doing until you confirm that you are gonna open. Um, let me just jump in. There was a question about, is it better to wait one round before you open? Um, we debate this. And again, it depends what's in our hand. Um, I err on the side of, I'd like to open as, as early as possible. 
there are exceptions and Dara talked about it. it maybe we would wait to pick an ace. Our opponents are open. That's going to give them an advantage to picking the discard pile. And unless we're going for a good special hand, that's that's a time that you don't wait to open. And one okay. really important strategy that Donna stressed when I first you would start talking to Donna is a lot of newer players want to show the cards they have. Oh, I have three fives. I want them out. Or I have, you know, the best advice is to keep, meld with the most minimal number of cards you can, number and point value, keep as much in hand as you can. Of course, once the stock starts dwindling, then you need to get rid of cards. But if you don't keep cards, you can't pick the pack. And there's some hands where you'll try to go out, you'll try to open, and the person to your left picks every single card you throw. And it's really frustrating because they picked a big pack and they didn't put anything down. So Most okay. important strategy, folks, after you open, hold cards in hand. We have a, a, a very clever illustration in the book. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I know that just because they have in two eights and a joker doesn't mean that they don't have more in their hand. But since they've already opened with it, or actually they have three nine, nine. And that even yeah. makes more sense. Yeah, probably the nine. So it's interesting. Basically, there's something that you could bait your opponent. So if I opened, and let's say I had five jacks, and I had enough points to open with only three, human nature, you're going to assume I put all the jacks down I could. It's a great strategy to get them. They could look back, they see that what you threw or they see what you put down and they could throw a jack and you could pick the pack. So it's great to either throw a card you have sometimes or keep cards back in hand. Also depends what they get in the town line. Yeah. Have they put down? A nine, I, you know, I really, it would be nice to get the creators of this game on to ask a well, question. I, I, and I've never asked them, but I think each bot must be programmed differently because there's yeah. some computers, they'll pick the pack, they'll open and they'll put just the minimum stuff down and they'll hold like 30, you know, and then other times they just put everything out, you know. Okay, um, Renee, a Talon is the replenishment cards you get after you open. Person number one gets four, person number two gets three. And they're taken after you discard. Mm -hmm. Well, they're gonna get something um, eventually. Oh, that was interesting. They just put the queens. Okay, so I'll do a queen. Could you try to match your partner's discard? Not always. Um, again, it depends what else is going on. Um, I actually, I actually think of it the other way. If my partner doesn't have the card, then I assume my opponents do. So I usually don't throw what my partner just threw, depending on, of course, you know, if we already opened, if we have card, you know. Yeah. I mean, here we are. We can't open. No. Um, we're really stuck. So now I'm looking. Um, the only card that we match with them, well, fours, but we don't have eights or nines. So I'll do, I'll do the queen. You always, you get a talon up to the turn card. Yes. And including the turn card. Once you get into the last eight cards, you cannot take a talon. You pick you up until the turn card. Right, up until the turn, including it. Um, on, they're open. Oh, partner, come on. No. Um, you can replace threes in those last eight cards. And now we're getting closer to a special. <laughs> oh, yeah, did you do the it. six or the king? Any preference? What did they throw? And have they been throwing sixes? Oh, the king. Throw a king. We throw the king. Through a six. And we closed out two canastas. So they're going to get out of dodge if they can. Well, in your game, Susan, that the three can't be replaced after the turn card, it's allowed here and it's allowed in many, many of the games. We're getting close to a special here. So that's what uh, I'm looking at. So we have, so what is, so what's closed? So nines and eights are closed. So that's fine. We don't have he that. He just threw a six before. Yeah. Um, 
So we have three of a kind, three of a kind, two of a kind, two, two. So I think we throw the six. Yeah, we throw the six. They're probably not going to pick the pack at this point. They're going to get out of Dodge. So another thing that's important to look at is obviously we want to open, but we also want to look. Um, they have three tens. They have four queens. They have four fours. Anything that your partner has four of, you can't close. Because... Yes, your I'm sorry, your opponents, because if they have four, then they um, once you need seven and you could only use a maximum of two wild. So if you have the other four and two wild, the most you can get is six. So I mean, at this point, we're scrounging for a special hand. Yeah. And this was opposite. I usually start looking for a special. This one didn't look very special. <laughs> A partner must have well they they had a couple of wild cards there our partner must have some wild cards but um well what are we going to throw here the ace will that set us up for a special dara three i think yeah three. four yeah. three yeah and yeah, i don't think there's the that ace. many aces in the pack nah then they're, they're not gonna he's only got two cards there and he threw an ace so now this is funny now we would need for a zip code we would need a two, a four, or a 10. Come on. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> One more, or two more tries probably. So, oh, so that's another thing to look at. Actually, if you look, this is a great example. Usually when you get to the turn. Ah, partner has a special. Yay. <laughs> I figured he, wow. All right. Yeah, he's got a special. Wow. All right. So our partner had the special with the pairs, with the aces, sevens. Um, Wow. Now they give 2000 for that. I think that's pretty much what we do. Also. So what's interesting is a lot of people get confused. If you have pairs with wilds, so you either have to have two twos or two jokers. For the special hands, you can't mix joker and two. For a wild card canasta, you could have any combinations of jokers and two. Right. So once you have twos or jokers, then you must have aces and sevens. If you have seven, seven pairs, but no twos or jokers, you could have any seven pairs. We did throw a king before because they only had two cards. And um, we were back. So somebody asked, did we throw kings? Yes, we did. The kings were not down on the, the board at the time. I think the opponent of the where the melds are put the kings down late, on, late in the game. Um, we knew fairly that they were safe cards. So um, here's who, before we go on, I'll just, let's see if there's- So anything. was it defensive throwing the king? Um, we were playing our hand. We were going for a special at that point. Um, so it really didn't matter. And they had very few cards. They had canastas closed out and it was not likely, there were not a lot of things in, in the discard pile. Um, so was it defensive? Uh, we weren't do we were doing it because we were playing our hand. Yeah, basically. So now, now we're at 180. So that's one thing that's really important to know. And we were thinking about it. Like when we wrote the book, it was amazing the things that came up that you just kind of intuitively know when you're playing, but when you're putting pen to paper. So after the score, when you're playing in person, the person who's keeping score, and it's a great idea for usually in the group, there's always one person that's really good at math or really enjoys taking score but it's great when you're learning to take turns just because understanding scoring really opens up strategy and it really makes strategy of the game click. Once the person who's scoring calculates it for both teams, they should announce the score of each team and then should announce um, your opening required point count. Just because, you know, sometimes you go to open and then you go, oh my goodness, I forgot we're at 180. So. Sarah, let me just jump in because it was a question in the chat that I, I missed earlier. Is the four fives used as two pair? No. You can only use one denomination no. of card per meld or per pair or per, per triple, not repeated again. And these aren't exactly our special hands, but they're very similar. And it shows, if you see J-O-J-O, -O, that's Joker. 
but it shows that some of them say like um, two of a kind, four of a kind, the garbage hand, it says no wilds. So before you put out your special, just confirm it because it's the same thing as a penalty for mismelding. If you put out a special and it's wrong, it's 10 points and then your partner can't do pure aces, sevens, or wild card canasta if they saw it, if you had those in your hand. And those are the things you want to have at table. They're not cheat sheets. They're used by everybody. And particularly since if you can't remember all the specials, they're down in front of you. If you use our special sheet and there's a variation in point count, that's fine. Um, and that's something you and your group would uh, agree upon. Our specials mirror the specials here pretty much, but our point values have been adjusted for fairness. Okay, let's see if we so, can get a break. Yeah. yeah, so Go Susan ahead. had a great point and she said in her game, they have rules, but when she subs, she always discusses table rules. We have a whole chapter on house rules and there's, you know, we're not writing this book and saying, this is how you must play. We were writing the book because people were clamoring for consistency. And they're like, when I go to this person's house in New Jersey, this is how they play. I go to Florida and they play completely different. We want people to have a sounding board and a place to meet. And then in the back, we have house rules. We have frequently asked questions. And then we have note pages. And you could just check off and write down notes of when I play with Donna and Dara, this is how they play when I play with this group. So it's really important to ask house rules. That's a great point. Okay, two questions, good questions here. Can a special hand include cards matching a closed canasta melded by the opposing team? Yes, These are all these rules are in our book. And by the way, we have three pages of streamlined rules at one of our, in one of our appendices at the end. Also, do you focus on specials at 180 when you are dealt few jokers and twos? Absolutely, and we do it even when we're not needing 180, because if you, somebody asked this question on one of my um, virtuals and Dara was with me and she quickly computed that we were asked, can you open without, a, without having a wild card? And Dara quickly computed, no, you've got to have at least Well, you, you would have to know that your partner has aces and use aces. It would be a very complicated move. And the only way you could do it also is if you had a splash, which is if you have in hand seven of the same number. So if you had all seven right. sixes in hand, you could open without a wild card. But right, but, a You're right. but, exception. but the traditional way that we've been playing, you because need... if you think about it, if you have th 14 cards in hand and you always need one for discard and after the turn card, you need two because you need to keep one in hand. So you have 13 cards. If the highest value of cards that you could mail without a wild is 10, you're you're going to be at 130. You know, it, it would be very difficult. So yes. Okay. So yes, we need 180. They're still at 125. So um let's see. Oh, and that's what I started saying before. When you get to the turn card, there's eight cards left. So that typically means you each have two cards. And everybody has two cards to pick before the game that round is over however last game when we got to the turn card there were only three out three threes on our team and three threes on the opposing team so that means there's two less cards for people to pick so if you are getting close to the turn card don't count on definitely getting two cards to get rid of aces and sevens if you see that not all the threes out start doing it earlier Right. And by the way, the person that said that they don't allow threes after the turn card, um, that's that's your table rule. But the reason that threes are allowed to be replaced, I believe, is because you can calculate those. You can't calculate a tell on if it's taken. It throws off too many cards. But when you have threes, and particularly you're paying attention, as Dara said, how many are on the board, that gives you a barometer of how to calculate. So the majority of uh, games play that you can replace threes. Uh, if your group doesn't like to do that, then that's okay. All right, what do we have here? Still not so a since lot we're of 180, um, my thought process is obviously we need to keep high cards because we need to build to 180 or get a special. Um, we have three low cards, so we could throw any of those. I like, if I have the points to keep a low pair, because when you get to 180, a lot of times, 
once you open, you'll see, you know, fours and fives and sixes go out and those are great to pick the pack with. A lot of people just start dumping them. But for now, we don't really have a choice. We got to get points. And, and really, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, if somebody says, what's the rule on blank? You know, the rules are set. The nuanced decision-making changes. And now, technically, we could win if we get, you know, a lot of points in this round. But we're not at like 7,500. Once you're over 7,000, then I play as risk averse as possible. I just want to open, get some points, and get out. I don't want to pick the pack. If it, by any chance there's extra aces or sevens, I just want to be safe and get out. 5,200, you know, we're, we're higher than the opponent. So we have some wiggle room. Okay, so I will get rid of another low card. So we could just do, I mean, we're nowhere near yeah. 80, but we could do a quick count. And to do a pair's hand, we've got to have, we have wild cards, so we've got to have aces and sevens. We need a joker. They haven't been giving us many jokers. No, yeah, we really yeah. haven't. Um, so this is interesting. Yeah. Do you keep the pair of fours and throw an eight or a nine? I, oh, gee, with 180. Oh, man. I well, mean, we, have, we have one, we have, you know, the king, the nine, the eight, all to get yeah. points and the ace. I mean, if we pulled in a couple of wild, a couple of jokers, then that pair would be helpful. We do have, we do have the, we have four king, four queens. Yeah. Hmm. They could be, they could use, be used to hook on a wild card, should we be so lucky. Yeah. No, they're opening again. Usually I find, but maybe the points have to do with the computer. Usually I find when a team opens, they usually give the other team the jokers, but that hasn't happened to us tonight. Well, one thing that you said in general about the game, though, which is very true, it's a game of, of balance and fairness. Yeah. Because yeah. as your points go up, then, you know, as your points go up, then it's more points to open. And if you pick the pack, you can't discard an ace or seven. So you get the benefit of the cards in the pack, but you get stuck with a card that you have to wait a turn to discard. I'm talking about the random dealing. Oh, yeah. And I mean, we haven't had, we haven't seen jokers much. They keep pulling in jokers. Jokers are the big deals. So, right, yeah, the nine of the king. Yeah. Oh, they have nines out. Yeah. And even though they have aces, oh, well, now we're, if they close the aces, we can't even open with aces. <laughs> uh, but that's something very important that even very experienced players go through. So our partner threw an ace. Yeah. When they you were going trying, for, a, when you were trying going for a special. Yeah. yeah. Make sure that you look at what hand, what cards are dead because you cannot use those cards to open. You could use them like we just said in a special. We got a very interesting question on one of your talks and I had, or maybe it was an email that we got. You can't add a dead card. You can't pick the pack with it. You can't add it to mails. You can't do anything with it other than use it in a special, a special or discard it when there are cards in the deck. So someone asked Donna, well, how come you could... Once a wild card is closed, Canasta, you could still add twos and jokers to Mel's. And I thought that was so interesting, but that's the one exception. Because they're wilds, that's why. Yeah. All right, so yeah. let's see. Let's get the Wheel of Fortune here. Um, oh, two, all right, so we have another pair. So one, two, three, four. I mean, there's a lot of twos out, and the chance of us getting one ace to get points is probably low. Yeah, that's what I'd probably throw would be the ace. Well, or we could throw the seven. I mean, either one. I think the ace is, first of all, it protects the pack. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that 180's a challenge. Somebody just posted something. If, if you're not close to 180, do you ever break up a meld as a potential safe card for a huge pack? You know, that's a good, it's, getting, it's one of those nuanced decisions. You're going to throw the nine, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. If that's a nuanced decision, DC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I'm going for a special, I might not play defensively because if we get that chance of a special, we're gonna we're gonna redeem our points. Oh boy. So four, three, three, two, and then we need the two. Since yeah. I think so much, I, I don't think five, you never want to throw the fifth ace or the fifth seven. 
I don't think there's. Well, the aces are closed. No, no, I'm saying that we only have a seven in hand. I'm just saying in general. Oh, the seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Well, that sets us up. We have to pull a two in, right? Yeah. Ugh. Um, but if we pulled a wild joker, we could still open. Yeah. Um, I think you take the chance with the seven. There's 31 cards there. Yeah. Also, it protects the discard pile. Uh, even if we get a uh, 50 point big joker, we still don't even have one, 180. Oh, we don't. Oh, oh, oh we are. Funny. So now okay. what? What do we do? Uh, we do. So we have, I'm just looking at the points. Yeah. So we have. 160, 65. Yeah. No, we need at least one card to throw. To throw. Oh. Yeah. And what did the person throw us? He threw a five. Uh, I usually don't, and this is just superstition, whatever. I usually don't like throwing what the person just threw me because I feel like if they don't, you know, they don't have it. And I, but at this point, we don't want to break up a queen or a 10 or a king because those are our only chances of opening. Need, I guess we have to throw the four, right? Mm -hmm. Because we need yeah. the points. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> we dodged a bullet there. Oh, good thing we didn't throw the 10. Yeah, we were. Yeah. Come Come on. Card. They, nope. You know, they probably at this point don't want to take the discard pile. They need to close the second one out and get out of dodge, maybe. So we need, but if we got. Why don't we throw what the opponent threw? Because we're playing our hand. That's why. Okay. We're not defending so... the pack. Do we have it now? No, we, this is hysterical. This just shows 30, 180 30. is tough. We got 170. Because we need, we need not only now we need two cards. Yeah. We need a discard. We need, we need another and joker. Then. Yeah, we need another joker is what we need. Uh, yeah, joker or a two. Yeah. I wonder if our partner is going for a special. No, he'll throw an ace. Yeah. All right. So we need a joker, a 10, a queen, or a king. Actually, yeah. Uh, no. Oh, Jack will throw the four. Yeah. I don't think they're going to pick the pack at this point, but not with two cards left. And we may get soused here. Come on, pick the pack yeah. with the six. <laughs> so what did our so, partner have? Oh, wow. They had five eights. Oh, wow. They were going for a special. Yeah. Yeah. And they're sitting with two jokers over oh, there. Oh, wow. Look at that. They had four wild cards there. They had, boy, that's that's why you couldn't, yeah. they're, they're getting the jokers, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it, that's the, the luck. All right. Let's go on. To oh, the hey, well, well, the benefit is we're back at 155. <laughs> and they're at one, they're at 155 now. So do you see how the game shifts also? I mean, we had, a so this is interesting. Hit. We have no, no wilds again. Yeah, we got lucky, DC, that we didn't have horrendous stuff. Yes. I wouldn't say we were that lucky. We would have been lucky if we could have opened and had a canasta. <laughs> no, we were lucky we didn't throw the, the 10. They would have had, oh, the like, 10. 18, yeah. they would have yeah, had yeah. like 18 uh, specials. We still don't have a wild card here. No. What the bazoozies? My goodness. And they're opening again. I'm calling up <laughs> Matt and Ronnie. <laughs> The other wow, look at open. how many cards they need to open. And they got one. They keep getting the jokers. Yeah. Get Ronnie on the phone. This is not programmed well. But, you know, it's the element of luck, folks, with dealing decks of cards. Oh, there was one day I was playing with my mom. It was embarrassing. I mean, the, the deals that I work and in live play. I mean, unbelievable openings. Yeah. Well, they got jacks there already. Well, so, we uh, eight's a safe card. That's a I still have rose colored glasses. Why, why wouldn't we have thrown the jack? Oh, well, that's true. I didn't even see that they had the jack yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, so it's better to throw a card that is closed because the eight they could pick the pack later and then get. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we're trying to do two things at once. Now we throw the jack. Uh, so, I mean, well, since we have no- We're well, looking at a special of pairs maybe. Maybe our partner might get a joker, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> or we, let's see. All right, so. so the, 
We're done throwing cards that they have. Yeah, we throw the five and see. So when I'm playing um, in person, a lot of times to be prepared in advance for when it's my turn, once I set it up, I put cards that are easy discards that I know are either dead cards or whatever. I put them on one side of my rack. Just kind of gets me in the mindset of cards that I know I don't need. Mm -hmm. Ooh, finally. Oh, they finally got a biggie. All right. So 130. So we can only put up one pair so far. So Joker, they already have one Joker out. I didn't get to see what they used in the Jacks. The fact that the Jack on the top is black means that there are Jokers in there, either a joke, either one wild, or wild. wild. So there's either a two twos or a two and a wild or two wild, uh, two Jokers. So the chance of getting a special when you need a oh. Joker is very difficult, especially yeah, if it's only, yeah. So would you throw the four since there's four fours and that's a safe? Yeah, probably. Because we have, probably. if we get another Joker, we could use the Kings. Right, yeah. Yeah, I throw the four. By the way, there was a question again about specials. You can't break up the nines to be two pairs of nines. No. They, it's one, one denomination. Per, per number or face card. Per number or face card, yes. Oh, ah, <laughs> so 140, 50, 67. And we got it with the four nine. So, the so me and I won't, I'll do whatever Donna says, but I no. will throw the four and wait to see if they threw a nine or a king to open. Um, to pick the pack? To pick the pack. That's what I would do. But I know that we're uh, teaching, so I'm not going to teach risky. Well, risky. No, we're, well what's now that? just, just to give a quick rundown. One of the most confusing aspects of the game are aces. So if you are opening and you put aces down and you put them down pure and do not add a wild card, then throughout the game, you cannot add a wild card. They must be pure. If you open and put aces down, you can add a joker. At no other point in the game can you put aces down with a joker. If you pick the pack to open, you cannot use a wild card with aces. So aces are this. Oh, category. yes. So, so we can't pick the pack to open then. If no, we can pick it if they threw a nine or a king, I'm saying. Oh, oh, right. We just can't use the aces. You know what? If you want to go for it, throw them a four. Let's go one more round. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's only one. I mean, if they, and just so you know. There's only two cards that they're going to possibly throw us. That's yeah. the only thing. If they but, had two canastas, I wouldn't be doing that. I'd be well, they're it. close to it, but this one has enough cards. Oh, goodness. Oh, shoot. All right. Yeah. Well, what do they it. throw them? What do they throw them? Six. Well, that just changed our tactic. Yeah, well, now we're not going to wait to pick the pack for anything. <laughs> oh, God, we're going to open. Yeah. I wonder, well, I wonder if we had opened, if they would have thrown our partner something they could have used. Could that's, have. That, that's yeah, a, you, that's, you never that's know, you change things around. Well, maybe they'll get stuck with sevens or aces. Well, we'll see. Oh, wow, look at that. One, two, three, four, five. No, all right, so we'll open. So, I know she was thinking of a special, but I, I, was. Don't know. I can't help it. Yeah, that. I know, I know right, how so, she works. Jack, four, six, and eight. Okay, good. We're not using any of those. Oh, shoot. I got to bring this down. Um, I need that for my kings. 40. Okay. So looking at what's- How many out. points? How many points do we have there? Are they showing us? Um, I might be blocking it. We have 200 <laughs> points. Yeah. Um, hold on one second. 120, 40. Do we have to put the kings? Oh, it, it's late. I mean, and the, it, when it's late, it's played. We might not have had to. We might have just been able to. Because I want it, but they don't show it. Well, normally, if you're in a live game, but this isn't done until it's done. You, I wonder if you can take them back. No, no, no. Switch. Once, once it's once it's, you it flips the cards the over. Points. Yeah, I wanted to tell you. I added it up the other way. All right, fine. Oh yeah, no, I shouldn't have put the kings down. All right, let me throw. They had kings. They probably wouldn't have thrown it, but it, the ten. Yeah. 
All right, we need our partner to put down a nine. A nine, yeah. So what's really important is at least getting one canasta because then you're not penalized for the threes. What's going on? So since we have a wild card on the ace, if they had two aces, they could have picked the pack. So our partner probably only had that one ace. So at least we'll get the nine. Yeah, how much does, how many cards does this guy have? He's still got a load of cards in his hand. So we're going to close out the nines. Close out the nines. If it was earlier in the game. Um, no, well, we're not waiting around. This guy's got two cards over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So uh, 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 the jacks are closed. How we play. Oh, somebody, yeah. we need to mute. Yeah, someone. can you, you want to mute? Because I don't want to mute you. So you want to mute uh, us. Mute all. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. Okay. And, uh, there we go. <laughs> oh, so what did our part, what did we get in there? Oh, we got the ace. They got the queens and then they got the ace back. So that's good because we yeah. could close out the queens. So look, yeah. so this is yeah. going to be a great, a great uh, teaching moment. Yeah. We have one, two oh. black threes. We have four red threes. Our score is oh, currently yeah. 660. So now, what are the queens? Queen, queen, queen. Queen. So it's a pure. And it went straight from 660 to 2490 because mm. we got the queen, but then that gave us all the threes. Yeah. So yeah. it's such a nice windfall. We had a lot of threes. Yeah. We have to throw the seven. Yeah. We have a wild card. So we're talking and I'm trying to do things at once. It's very important to count aces and sevens in the pack because you never want to throw the fifth ace or the fifth seven. It's very hard for some people, including me, to remember each time that the pack is picked and started again to start counting again. Oh, goodness. We don't have a choice, right? We don't have a choice. Yeah. Because we can't throw. You have you, to, if you have a real card to throw, you must right. throw it. It's, it's good advice, but it's hard to put it into, you never want to leave yourself with the only option. Well, there's one card left. Seven. There's one card left. Yeah. But. All right, so well, that was a nice turnaround. That, that hand looked like we were going to really get stuck and we. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. Um, if anybody has a question about scoring, this is a time to look and we really um, did well with the threes. Um, we got 1,300 threes, they got 300. Um, let's see how the total ran. So we, somebody ended up, we ended up getting almost as many points as they did. Yep. And you answered the question about um, show the hand points. So if you go into settings and you go into more options, it shows current count. So if you have that on, it shows the current count in the mailed area. However, that shows your points Let's say you put out a wild card meld. It shows your points for your melds. It doesn't show you what would happen if you don't close those. So that's just a, a note to self. You know, if you put down five aces without a wild card, it'll show you a hundred points or, but it won't show you that if you don't close them, it's going to be a penalty. Right. Okay. All right. We're hitting past the eight o'clock. We're going to at least go this round to see okay. if we can uh, pull it out. Yeah. So, um, well, why did you put uh, so, so we can't throw a seven because you cannot, even an though we can tray. Pack, you cannot throw an ace or a seven. Um, an, an empty tray is never the place for a, a dead card, an ace, a seven, a dead card. Or a three. Uh, Oops, and again, sorry. we didn't get jokers, but. Uh, I guess we're possibly looking. We need 180. They need 180. We, we need special is what we need with this deal. Yeah. I mean, we have sure all do. low cards and sevens, and then the, I mean, no wild yeah. cards. The I mean, maybe they gave our partners some jokers here. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh. So I think uh, we can go the nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's still early, and they need 180. They're not going to get a special hand. I should bite my tongue. Yeah. Uh, Usually it takes a little while. I think while. one time I got a special on my second pick and it, that was, 
Very and nice. one time, and once I got the straight that you know, ace. Yeah, well. whatever. DC, right. you know so who the one, gambler? Two, three, DC four, knows so who need, the gambler is in this in this partnership. <laughs> we need a four, a six, or a king. Come on. All oh, right. That would be a nice yeah. way to end this uh, live. Oh man! Come on down. Ah. Uh. Uh. So I laugh. There is such a tell in Canasta when you're playing live, when someone's going for a special and they get a two. <laughs> like it just well, did you will you explain why we we all we needed was a four, a six, or a king for the zip code. Again, the zip code. So the dreaded while. Uh, yeah. So at this right. point, I mean it depends on how much you'd want to gamble. We could throw a four and continue hoping for a two. Or we can make it a little safer and throw a seven. Uh, one, two, three, four. I mean, for 180, we're not going to get 180 with all those sevens, but we could still go for a what you want to call it. I mean, I, we need four of a kind and we have pairs. Um, I guess, I mean, what, what is the downside to throwing one of our pairs instead of the seven? Um, I mean, a pair of fours isn't going to really help us with much at all. No, no, I'd say it's fine. Oh, and there, yeah, you said they're at 180 also. Yeah. And I just like tapping on the ones that I know I can meld. So I know I can meld those three. I'm not going to put the sevens up because I'm not going to meld four sevens. Never. <laughs> Uh, throw the four, yeah. So best case scenario, we get a two. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, there we go, finally. Yeah. I guess our partner finally pulled a joker in. Ooh, wow. <laughs> After three hands. And just so you know, see how the 80s up? If you have the points up, you will not see the little button that says special hand. So make sure if you think you have a special, you get stop counting your points. We do have a courtesy special. We wouldn't get it here, yeah. but um, there is something called the courtesy special and Real Canasta does. Okay. So, uh, so now we throw a seven. Yeah. That's one. Well, it's funny. Actually, I, I would have thrown an ace only because now it doesn't matter because they're opening. Oh. If we threw oh, an right. ace, then the aces we'd be safe with. So in hindsight. You're right. You're right. Ace. You're right. We should have thrown the ace. Okay. Well, they just opened. They're yeah. getting those jokers all night there. Yeah, they really have gotten a lot of jokers. I'm telling you. All right. Because we closed out the queens. Good. And when we finish, I'll finish, I'll there finish the game off, offline and, and, and I'll I'll add it to the chat. Oh shoot, maybe I'm being cocky. I don't want to, I don't want well, them to take the game now. They picked the discard pile. Well, hello. Our partner didn't have a lot to throw because they they opened. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they got a lot of. They well, got a silver lot of lining. We have a lot of safe cards to throw now. We get, we get too safe. <laughs> All right. All right. So now, you wouldn't add the eight yet, would you? I well, what about putting the two kings down? At least, yeah. At least we can close. Put the two kings and okay. maybe a wild card. Let's get a second canasta. And then and now we throw the ace, definitely. So basically, when your partner opens, it's usually good etiquette if proper etiquette, if if the other team has an open or if they're not close to closing out the round, to go at least one round around to let them add natural cards and let them see what they have in it. And then if they don't, then you could add wilds or whatever and close up. Because you never know what they picked in the Talon to add to it. If they open by picking the pack, you don't have to worry about that because if they had right, it. But they opened the round before. Um, right. All right, let's see. All right, so can't. So now we'll get rid of the seven. Seven. So now at least we're safe. Right, and aces haven't been melded by either, so we should hold the two. Yeah. So we have two canastas. I mean, we're not going to pull us out of the round probably but they got that pack with good stuff in it 
uh, or yeah, the any of the cards. So I know this is, you know, intuitive, but you want to get rid of points because right. right now the 10 would be minus 10. So I want to get it out of my Hold hand. on one second. I was going to tell you to put the eight down, but okay. Oh, okay. They're getting ready to go out. Yeah. Um, and then it was interesting. The other day, someone asked, if you have three kings, but you know you can't close them, do you use them for discards or do you put them out and meld them? And if I have a lot of cards that I could use as discards, if you meld them, it's assuming you have canasses, it's 30 points on the board towards your score. And if you keep them in hand and you, somebody closes, then it's negative 30. So it's a big swing. So if you if you can put them out and have other discards, then you might as well meld them. Oh, all right. So now we can put both eights out. Both eights, good. And then I think the four is safe. That's the, oh, well, now the, the jacks, jacks. the yeah. jacks. Oh, we definitely are getting rid of that. Not oh, too bad we couldn't have used them. Oh well. They don't. Oh my god! I think look at that. They they wow. they, 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 they squeaked they, it out. They squeaked it out. Why why aren't you getting rid of all aces? Because all right, we'll answer that question. Neither team melded aces with wild cards. That goes, aces go in the category of sevens. You don't yes. want to load up the discard pile so that your opponents can pick them and get seven aces. And that could happen up till the very end. Um, so that's why we kept two in our hand. And we have a lot of times game. when you see at the very end, unless someone went out, most pe most players will try to keep at least two sevens and aces in hand unless they're signaling with each other. All right, their threes helped them this time. They had 800 oh, points. Oh, that's threes. what put them over. I that's was looking what put them points. over. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking. Oh, well, yeah. well, at least it was a good learning lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, you know, this was luck of the draw. We had we had almost every round where we were, you know, we were not picking the great cards. But I think it was good. Let's, as we're finishing, uh, let's put up some information. And are there other questions that people have? Um, as we are leaving. And we also have a Facebook group. If you remember something after we end, please post it and we we will answer you. Are we good? So I'm just going through. If, if anybody wants, they could raise their hand if they want to talk, if they have any questions. Okay, we hope, we thank everybody for joining us. We hope it was helpful to get in our heads. We all, We always don't have the answers. Uh, why didn't we meld three aces? That's suicide. It's minus 2,500 points. You don't want to meld pure aces or pure sevens unless you know you have seven of them. That's 99.9% .9 of the time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll put this on YouTube and hope you enjoyed. Have a great night. And a great summer, folks. Bye for now.